Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Yammy Noob's Motorcycle Emporium. It is the show all your friends are missing out on, and you'll be the one talking about 30 years from now. Without further ado, here's your host. It's the one, the only, the Rossi worshiping manscaped, you know it, Shabby Cube. Man, I should really introduce myself more often. Maybe I'll try it out when I go to the Vega Torium. People should know I'm there. They should know that they're shopping with greatness. I wonder if the bagger kid will let me use the PA system. Who here works with the PA system and will let me announce my presence? Let me know in the comments below. A road trip to break in my new Daytona may have to be arranged. Just kidding. It's a track only bike. All right, you're here for a show, so let's get cracking. Today, my little yam pie casseroles, I am going to impart the wisdom of the cruiser upon you. Not just any cruiser. No, my dear yams, these are the best cruiser. And not just the best cruiser, but the best beginner cruisers. That's quite a claim to fame around these parts. I love my boosted boys, but I'm here for my sweet baby squids. The new kid on the block. The starry-eyed, waddling beginner babes who are popping their clutches, missing first gear, and hoping to downshift at red lights. Uh, to be a beginner again. On to the cruisers. When you're first starting out, it's good to have a bike that's lightweight, easy to maneuver, and something you're comfortable on. Cruisers are a good fit as long as you don't get into the heavy side of life. And that's why most Motorcycle Safety Foundation courses actually use small cruisers as their training bikes. They've got great seat heights to make you feel in control of the bike, a comfortable riding position, and all in all, they feel pretty natural. So let's take a look at a few cruisers that's gonna get you ready to hit the road. Up first, the Yamaha V-Star 250. The Yamaha V-Star 250 has a solid 27 inch seat height, so it's comfortable for all riders, but especially for those of average height or less. It's also got a V-Twin. It doesn't have just any V-Twin though. It's the only bike in this class with a V-Twin. So it's a cool bike for a beginner, but it's also pretty cool for someone who's been kicking around on two wheels for a while. And when we say in this class, we mean the very small, yes, very small displacement cruiser class. Cruisers are typically equipped with larger displacement V-Twins, or they have tiny single cylinders like the Honda Rebels of the world. This isn't to say it's superior to the Honda Rebel due to its multi-cylinders, merely it's going to give you the proper V-twin sounds you're accustomed to hearing from a cruiser. The great thing about most of the bikes on this list is they are manageable for a complete beginner, but they also have some growing room. So a beginner will be completely comfortable learning on any of these models, but six months or a year down the road, you won't be bored and shopping for a new bike. Well, you might be shopping for a new bike, but not because you're bored with your starter bike. You'll probably be shopping for a new bike because, well, who doesn't like shopping for a new bike? And two, you got bike fever. Welcome to the club. Bike number two, the Indian Scout. The Scout comes in three models, the Bobber, the Scout 60, and the OG Scout. All three of them are actually pretty great options, but the Scout 60 is under $10,000 brand new, and it's actually gonna be an attractive bike. And that's something that can't be said of the other bikes that we're gonna look at a little later on. The 60 is a 999cc bike, so it's definitely on the borderline for beginners, but keep in mind, a 1000cc cruiser is a lot different than a 1000cc leader bike sport bike. The torque curve and the top end power is dramatically different so much so that you could easily find a 1,000cc twin that makes about 90 or 100 horsepower versus a 1,000cc inline four on a super bike that makes 200 horsepower. Now that's two completely different riding experiences. Any of the models available are great options thanks to their low seat heights, easy customization options, and the way they put out power. You could find trouble on this bike if you really wanted to, but for a responsible rider, this one's gonna be a lot of fun. The Indian Scout is gonna give you that classic American cruiser credibility if you're into that sort of thing, but between you and me, a metric cruiser is probably gonna run better and longer than an American bike. Moving on, bike number three is none other than the Honda Rebel. Now the Honda Rebel is a bit of a maligned bike, often touted as one of the least powerful, most wretched little machines you can buy, and hell, I even roasted it on my Instagram when someone asked me what mods should they make to it, and I told them to sell it. The Rebel is found in nearly every MSF class, and that's for a very good reason. They're extremely easy to ride, specifically the Honda Rebel 500. This was definitely one of my favorite beginner bikes for any class, but the fact that it's a cruiser means that it was made for this video, or maybe this video was made for it. Let's get philosophical, or maybe we won't. The Honda Rebel 500 is a super approachable bike. It has a two cylinder engine, so it puts out some punchy power without it being over the top. The fun thing is this one has room to grow into it as you become a better rider, where other beginner bikes tend to be boring once you figure out what you're doing. One main issue with this cruiser is it's gonna come with a 471cc parallel twin, the same one found in the CB500 platform, so it's not gonna give you those burbly V-twin sounds that we associate with cruisers, but it is better than the anemic sounds of the Rebel 300 with a single cylinder. Unless you're extremely tight on cash, I'd skip the Rebel 300 and go straight for the 500. It's not going to have rocket ship performance and should be easy to manage. Number four, the Suzuki Boulevard S40. The Boulevard is one of those bikes that you buy for efficiency and practicality. You certainly don't buy for the aesthetic qualities as it has none, and what little it does have probably came from somewhere in Shrek's family tree. But looks aside, the Boulevard S40 is a solid bike. It's got basic format that leaves little room for question when a beginner hops in the saddle. It's a whopping 381 pounds 
the full tank and you can get one brand new for less than 6 G's. If you want to find one using the old Craigslist, go right ahead. These bikes have been basically the same thing for the last decade, so give it a quick quality check and you're basically buying the same thing. The interesting thing about this bike is that if you can get past the attractiveness factor or lack thereof, the Boulevard S40 has a beautiful single cylinder 652cc engine. So we're talking about beginner bikes with an intermediate rider potential. It's definitely not the beginner bike you'll get tired of six months down your license. You just gotta get past that vibey single cylinder and those looks, yeesh. If you're feeling adventurous and maybe a bit older, the Suzuki Boulevard C50 is a great option. With an 805cc V-twin, you're gonna get all the classic cruiser vibes you're looking for from this thing without any of the hateful single cylinder vibrations found in the S40. Bike number five here to chase away the image of our previous bike is the Yamaha Star Bolt. The Star Bolt is a stylish little number that's gonna open up with 942ccs. There's a lot of customization options on here since they're a blend of American cruiser and Japanese manufacturing. You're gonna get a super clean frame with a round headlight as the focal point, so you'll have a really blank canvas to work with as far as customization goes. It's pretty affordable and it's great for the modern rider who doesn't want a lot of fluff muddling their mechanics. I've actually ridden the Yamaha Star Bolt. You can go back in my catalog and see me riding this beast of a bike. They are supremely comfortable and will give you loads of fun for many years. And that brings us to bike number six, the Kawasaki Vulcan 650. The Vulcan is a pretty obvious choice based on sheer numbers alone. The Vulcan is lightweight and the high compression inline twin engine gives it a modern spin that many classically designed cruisers are missing. Not to mention the trellis frame and attention paid to technology, it's gonna give you a lot of runway. And because it's a cowboy, you know it's gonna be affordable and quality, which are two things I look for in my daily needs. But again, if you need those V-twin sounds and proper cruiser aesthetics, the Vulcan 650 might let you down. Now, it's time to address the elephant in the room. You'll notice I didn't include any Harleys in this list for best cruisers for beginners. Now, why is that? A few reasons. One, Harleys have notoriously bad reliability issues. It's not my opinion, that's a fact based on consumer report studies. Check our least reliable motorcycle brand videos. And for beginners, having a bike that runs and isn't gonna cause you issues is what most important in my opinion. Number two, Harleys just have bad value propositions. Their prices are artificially inflated because Harley knows its core audience of dentists and doctors in their late 40s are willing to pay more more for the brand, but for you, a new rider who doesn't care about brand recognition and just wants to get rot and ride, that's just bad news. Number three, the Sportster and 883s are your options for beginners, but again, I just don't think they're that great of bikes. However, that's just my opinion and you do whatever you want to do. Truth be told, any of these beginner bikes are going to provide you ample fun and give you those classic cruiser looks that you want. I think the main thing you're going to have to decide is if the sound is important to you. The Suzuki's single cylinder or the parallel twin found in other cruisers from the big four might deter some folks looking to get on and ride a style of this bike. I know it would for me. Part of getting a cruiser is the whole package, and that does include the sound that it makes. Personally, I'd say swing a leg over one of these bigger V-twin cruisers, such as the Star Bolt, the Boulevard C50, or even the Indian Scout, and see what you think. Despite the engine having grunt down low, if you have a responsible throttle hand, it would be tough to get into trouble with these bikes. I've said it before and I'll say it again, certain bikes make you want to ride in certain ways, and something like a cruiser is going to make you want to go slow and easy, not at the manic pace that a sport bike might coax you into. My personal pick from today's crop of bikes would have to be something like the Star Bolt. It's reliable, looks good, and it's going to put plenty of smiles on your face for years to come. That's going to do it for today's show. Thanks for your patronage, participation, and puzzling comments. Do yourself a favor and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you actually want to know when we post new content, be sure you've got your notification settings on by hitting the bell right next to it. Now, okay, listen close. This is that Yammy Noob ASMR. Are you ready? Imagine a place where you can come learn about bikes, hang out with like-minded individuals, and get access to exclusive content. And best of all, hang out with me one-on-one. -on -one. Sounds pretty sweet, huh? What if I told you all you need to do to learn more about that is hit the link below? That's because I'm talking about my Patreon, my dudes. It started out as the beginner bike giveaway custom build series thing with the hentai hornet. We're still doing that. We got the KTM RC390. And it's going to be shipped out. But the community aspect has really grown to be the best part about it. We've got channels on our Discord server, which is a chat room you can access on desktop or mobile. We've got memes, bike purchase decision, general chats, and more. You also get to participate in our weekly $100 Revzilla gift card giveaways as part of our It Came From Craig the series. So if you want the best chance to win our giveaway KTM RC390 and join over 650 people who have signed up, hit the link below and join up. I promise you won't regret it. Just ask any of our giveaway bike winners or our current members in the comments below. Go to patreon.com slash to get started today. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Fact, human birth control pills work on gorillas. Why did we test that? I don't know. That's super weird. Goodbye.